I mean, the Strix is supposed to be the, the best of the best. I mean, or at least I thought it was. Hey, what's up? John Shred here. And today we are looking at this Asus Strix 4070 Ti. I'm gonna unbox it, take a look at it, compare it in size to some other cards I have around, and then check out the performance. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, if it's your first time here, I love to review new tech. And today we have this brand new sealed Strix 4070 Ti. If you haven't seen my video on the 4080, check it out here. And I've also checked out a few other 47s to compare. I have the Zotac Trinity OC 4070, uh, and then I also have uh, the MSI Gaming X Trio 4070 Ti. I'd like to get this guy open, see what's inside the box. I actually reviewed the 4080 so long ago when it first came out that I can't really remember what it comes with. But here, let's get it opened and we will find out. Oh, G Strix, what, what? Ta da. Accessories, ROG. Who uses this stuff? Please comment down below if, if you use any of these accessories. Uh, we have a three eight pin power adapter. Once again, don't recommend using these. I do have a video here just about different uh, dedicated 12 pin cable options you can use. And then the standard Asus um, riser uh, for SAG on your system. So let's get this. All right, here we go. First look. I mean, it is identical design to the 4080, 4090. Interesting things to note that the 4070 Ti does come with a dual BIOS switch up here, which is nice. Um, considering that this is one of the higher end 4070 Ti cards, uh, that is really nice to see. Uh, like I say, it's actually a three card slot uh, with a two card bracket. You can see there. Uh, we'll take a peek at the 4090. It actually has the same two card bracket, which I'm surprised. Uh, the card itself, of course, is much bigger. You can actually see a 4090 right here, ROG Strix. Uh, we'll pull out, we'll compare those in, in a second. Um, yeah, the rest is very similar power connector here. Um, yeah, here, let's grab a couple of the cards. Let's grab the 4090 first. Okay, let's do a side by side. Hopefully top down, you can see that. Yeah, I mean, it's not that, I would say it's about three quarters of an inch shorter than the 4090. It's, uh, I don't know, two and a quarter, maybe a quarter inch thinner in width and height wise, it is identical. So. Size is actually pretty darn close. Now the 4080 and the 4090 are pretty much identical. So the fact this 4070 Ti is only slightly smaller is very interesting. Now, I did, on my video that I reviewed both MSIs, the Gaming X Trio, I also did the 4090 and the 4070 Ti. And they're actually very similar in size, especially in length. The MSI Gaming X Trio decided to keep their, uh, essentially the length through all of their cards, uh, which did help with thermals. Now. We'll see how these two cards do compare later. What other card can we pop in here? Here is a 3090 gigabit OC vision. Wow, hold on here. If you see them side by side, this thing's a baby. So it's another half inch shorter, but it is or longer, uh, shorter from, from lengthwise. And then thickness, definitely about a half inch 
thinner. Uh, wow, it's, let me put this guy over here for now. You can literally see this, like it's, yeah, it's kind of baby. So, uh, as we knew, the 4000 series cards are significantly bigger. Um, I was very surprised with the Zotac Trinity OC. Hold on, I made a lovely mock-up of what the, uh, the Trinity OC is, and it's a lot closer to the size of the 3090. Here, let me compare it. Here, when you get these guys side by side, uh, you can see the Strix is an inch longer with thickness kind of, it's, it's about the same, uh, but this really cool what Zotac did with their Trinity OC line and they made it so small, but still uh, performs extremely well. So I'm not surprised to see that the Strix 4070 Ti is uh, longer and bigger. Uh, like I say, it is the highest end 4070 Ti that Asus makes and I assumed they would went, they went all out with their thermals. So, uh, okay, what other cards do we have? I think that's it for today. Uh, let's pop this into my Corsair 5000D, see how it fits, and, uh, and fire it up. Uh, let's boot this guy up and uh, and see what she looks like. So design-wise of the lighting, it's identical to the 4080 and 4090. I mean, you have your, your ROG kind of lights along the side. Um, to me, I mean, I, I'm hit or miss. Uh, MSI Gaming S Trio did the exact same thing. If you looked in a computer, you really couldn't tell just by looking if it's a 4070 Ti, if it's a 4080 or a 4090. And I mean, rip EVGA, but I mean, I loved their cards because it said right on the side of the car, 47 or 3070, 3080, 3090. There's just something nice about being able to show off the thousand dollar card that you just purchased uh, and to say that it is that model. So, I mean, it's booting up. Um, yeah, not a whole lot more I can do at this stage. I'm gonna shut her down, uh, reconnect, do some performance tests. We'll check out how loud the card is uh, and then really give my general idea of what I think compared to the other 4070s in its category. So, be right back. Three days later. And we're back. Now, I've got a lot to cover on this card. Uh, but first things first, the question that everybody wants to know, does this card have coil wine? The tiniest, tiniest little bit. I mean, if literally I had to put my, my, my ear up to the card and I could hear a tiny, tiny little buzzing. When I get to the audio levels later, I'll try and give an example of it. In my opinion, perfectly passable. If you have the side of your case on, you wouldn't notice it at all. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, smash that like button and, uh, and subscribe. Now let's talk gaming performance numbers first. Check out these benchmarks. I was really surprised to see that the Gaming X Trio 4070 Ti beat this Asus Strix in every single game I tried. I mean, it wasn't by, by much, just very, very slightly, but considering the Gaming X Trio is more of a mid-tier card in line with the Asus Tough, I was surprised to see that it beat it. I mean, the Strix is supposed to be the, the best of the best. I mean, or at least I thought it was. Well, what about overclocking potential? I mean, the Strix, I was able to overclock the GPU core itself by 125 megahertz, bringing it up to 2,970 megahertz, just shy of that 3K mark. 
Now on the VRAM, I was able to overclock it 1400, 1450 megahertz increase, which brought it right up to that 12,000 megahertz mark. But did it make a difference? I mean, was it a huge, did, did it blow the Gaming X Trio out of the water? Nope. Uh, it, both cards overclocked very well by increasing by eight to 10%, but because the Gaming X Trio was already in the lead, it, it stayed in the lead. I mean, I'm not super surprised because I've, I've reviewed most of the Gaming X Trios in the 4000 series and I mean they're, they're amazing cards and they've really kept the form factor large which is going to help uh, with overclocking. Hey thanks to those who, who clicked the, the Amazon affiliate links down below. Uh, just this week I had someone buy an AMD CPU and I made 10 bucks. I mean I don't really make a whole lot of money on this channel so that's pretty cool. Thank you. I need to take a mo another moment and reflect at how awesome DLS DLSS 3.0 is. I mean, I hadn't really paid it much attention. I've heard people go blah, blah about it, but it wasn't until I reviewed the Gaming X Trio 4070, I said, let me check this out with Cyberpunk 2077. You can check out that video here. Now, I mean, it, it's, it's so mind blowing. I was literally playing Diablo 4 recently and frame rates went from 150 frames per second at 144p, which is, I mean, it's substantially great for this card, but if I turn on DLS, DLSS, I'll, I'll figure out how to say it one day. With frame generation, it literally went from 150 frames to 250 frames a second. Like that's, that's a ridiculous job. And it, I could not tell visually the difference. I had it set on the, on the performance setting uh, and it looked amazing. I know it's not ideal for first person shooters uh, due to the latency, but I mean, games like the Diablo, uh, I think it's pretty sweet. And one thing to note about this card, when I was testing both Diablo 4 and Call of Duty Warzone, uh, it's season four of this out now, both cases, uh, the game itself crashed. Uh, I kind of got an error pop up and, and it kicked me right back out to the desktop. I thought originally it might've been from because I was overclocking the card too much, but it had the same thing happen when I just had it at stock settings. I'm not sure if this has to do with the NVIDIA drivers I'm currently using. I'm on currently 536.23, but it is something to note. Not sure if it's the card or anyone else is experiencing the same crashes. I recently received a comment on my Asus 4090 Tough video asking for some more performance related benchmark figures. Thank you, Florian, uh, for the super thanks. Uh, it's my first one, and if you don't know what a, a super thanks is, it's a way that YouTube allows viewers to donate a small any sum of money towards the channel and I mean it's awesome thank you thank you so much really really appreciate it so after his comment I decided okay well maybe I should check out blender with this Strix 4070 Ti to see how well it performs uh, unfortunately I didn't test it on the Gaming X Trio 4070 Ti but I did on the Zotac Trinity OC the difference the Strix was 10% faster than the Trinity OC. That, that's not a small sum. I mean, the Trinity OC was a little bit slower with gaming as well, but that's like two to 3% slower. We're talking 10% difference. So, I mean, there could be a case that if you are a workstation user, that the Strix could be the card for you. Thermals, now how hot, hot, hot did this card get? It didn't, it was super cool. I mean, uh, at max testing, the GPU only came up to 70 degrees Celsius and the VRAM was at 78 uh, degrees Celsius. And comparing this to the Gaming X Trio, it was pretty much the opposite where the, the GPU in the Gaming X Trio was 77 degrees Celsius and the VRAM was 72. So, I mean, both still great and considering the size of, of both cards, uh, I'm not surprised. Lighting. Now there isn't a whole lot to say about this card for lighting. It's not my favorite. I still prefer the 3000 series version of the Strix, but it's identical to the 4080, 4090. Uh, from a brand standpoint, uh, they've really manufacturers have kept the cards very similar. This all the Strixes look the same, and all the Gaming X trios look the same. And I'm still a proponent of EVGA. It does say. 3090 Ti. Just, I loved that idea that you could look in the case and see what kind of card it is. Now I did run into one issue uh, after I installed the Strix where 
the, the car would boot up, uh, you'd see the lights come on, and as soon as it got into the operating system, boom, all the lights would just turn off. I, kinda, I didn't really notice it at first. I decided to open up Asus uh, Armory Crate. If you don't have that software installed and you're using any Asus products, I highly recommend it. I mean, I know it's another piece of software to have installed, but it does a great job at looking for Asus devices in your system and keeping them updated. So what I found when I opened it up was that there was an Aura Kit update specifically for this 4070 Ti. Installed it literally the second that it installed, boom, all the lights came on. So if you're experiencing the same issue, download Armory Crate. Speaking of Asus, I'm, what's your opinion on this drama that happened, that happened last month with all the motherboards uh, essentially catching fire, uh, a lot of issues, and how Asus handled it. I'd, I'd like to hear your opinion, and if you're still Team Asus after all that. I mean, you're here looking at this Asus GPU. I mean, it's not a motherboard, but has their brand been tarnished in your opinion? I mean, I've been using Asus for years. To me, I, I absolutely love them. Yeah, they messed up, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that they're working towards a fix. Am I going to switch? I mean, I have an Asus ProArt B650 motherboard with a 7950X that I'm gonna slap into a Fractal North case. Stay tuned for that one. And I'm probably gonna throw a Asus Strix 4090 into it. So, I mean, there's still a lot of Asus love there. So yeah, let me know where you're at with that one. Audio levels. Okay, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Coil wine's pretty much non-existent. You are good. I'll uh, here. I'll record the audio levels from a cold boot, so you can you can hear that, and then I'll jump into Diablo 4 for a bit and just just run it, so you can hear some uh, see how loud it is. To me, this card sounds just like any other GPU. It spins up when you're playing a game, but it's not crazy loud. Uh, to me, it's, it's perfectly acceptable. Pricing and value. Okay, I mean, we all know that Strix cards are expensive. They're the, the cream of the crop, the top and highest end card. Well, this 4070 Ti comes in at $1,050 on bestbuy.com right now. Uh, but I did find it for $9.89 on Newegg. So please shop around if you are looking for this card. It's a direct competitor to the MSI Supreme or a Gigabit AORUS Master. Uh, you can kind of get both cards, price point a little bit less. I still find the Strix is always the most expensive. And definitely given the poor reputation that Gigabyte's having right now, stay away. I am still trying to sell this 3090. So the real question is, is this card worth paying an additional $100 to $150 over a mid-tier card like a Gaming X Trio? Well, considering that the Gaming X Trio performed better, it still has a pretty cool look. I do like the slash lighting design on it. I don't know, it's kind of hit or miss when it comes to gaming. Now, for workstation performance, I guess I didn't get a chance to try it against the Gaming X Trio, but there was something special about the Strix when I did the Blender benchmarking. Could you get an MSI Supreme for you know a little bit less than this Strix? I mean, when I looked at the 4090s, and I'll, I'll, I'll look and I will compare it, I didn't get a chance to get my hands on a Strix until now, but months ago when I was doing all those 4090 reviews, I mean, the Supreme was definitely the cream of the crop. Talking to people, if you are a Strix lover, you, you just buy it and that's it's kind of just you've had good experience you, you always know that if i buy a strix it's it's a good card component it, it'll last you a long time there's usually no doubt about its performance and its quality so tell me are you team asus team msi i mean let, let me know in the comments down below. Lastly, I just want to bring back that whole workstation user thing. I will continue to do more tests there. 
Uh, but if you have a Strix, let me know if they stand out significantly in workstation performance or their cards. This is something that's pretty new to me with this video. Uh, let me know if this is a, is a common thing. Well, that's it. Thank you very much. Stay tuned uh, for the next video. Subscribe. Uh, like I said, the next one will be this Strix 4090. So if that's uh, in your ballpark, check it out when it pops. Thanks. Thank you.